Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a huge DIY on this, the French Cleat Garage Gym Storage. Just as a heads up, this is going to be mostly a voiceover video because I imagine that y'all don't want to listen to basically 15 minutes of me using saws and drills. However, if you are excited about what I think is probably the best garage gym or just garage or just storage option available, then you'll want to check this video out. After the voiceover, I will meet you right back here and I'll show you some of the more specialized mounts that I made. But right now you need to get in and see how to make your own French cleat garage gym storage walls. Hey everybody, welcome to the voiceover. So I'm a huge tool nerd. Not that I have nice tools, but that I set them up according to the way that my shop teacher used to make me do it back in school. So here I am, I'm gonna rip these boards at five inches. And so I set the fence. I don't know what that part's called on that saw, but basically set the fence to five inches and basically just sent it. This first cut, I went super slow because I, I wasn't sure uh, how well this saw would be doing. It's still got the original blade on it. I've had it for like 10 years, but it tore right through uh, with no real issues. I'm also trying to go slow because French cleat design kind of calls for, like it probably doesn't really call for that high of tolerance, but it's a high enough tolerance that I feel the need to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. So what I did is I bought two four by eight sheets and I actually ended up not using all the material, but I am going to use it to make barbell mounts. And I ripped it all down into a bunch of five inch sections. And then that last section that you saw was about seven inches. After that, I fired up the table saw, set it to 45 degrees, made a couple test cuts until I got a two and a half inch piece. I did have to sacrifice a piece of uh, five inch material to get that. Funny enough, if you want to rip a five inch board down the middle using a 45 degree angle, and I'm sure someone on here that's smarter than me could probably tell you the exact size, but basically it's not two and a half inches. You don't set the saw to two and a half inches. After I ripped all the boards and was basically taken advantage of by all the cicadas in the entire neighborhood, which by the way, are 100% attracted to loud noises, I decided to mount the first board. I did it about 10 inches up. Now, if you have a friend, this might be where you call the friend. Get your friend out there. Me, I don't really have any friends where I live right now. I live in new construction, so it's not because I'm a disagreeable person. It's because nobody else lives near me yet. So I ended up using my knee. So once I put the board up at 10 inches, used my knee to brace the board, and I can still see where all the studs are. So this something that you should definitely do is mark all your stud lines and went ahead and started to, to secure all the boards to the wall. And I'm using uh, between two and two and a half inch screws. I ended up switching up to two and a half inch just because I wanted to make sure it had that extra holding power. And that is pretty much it. All right, so now just to explain real quick what's going on here. Basically, this is a French cleat. A French cleat is two opposing 45 degree angles used to do wall storage. So the idea is I would basically make different attachments and I have a whole bunch of this mitered at a 45 degree angle wood and what I do is I make attachments I attach those attachments to this bracket and then what I can do is as I make more of these layers is I can place this wherever I want. The advantage is that as this pulls down basically it's just pulling further into the wall which makes it actually a tighter hold. Uh, French cleats are awesome for that they're just a lot of work uh, to make but after you make them infinite possibilities. I've even gone as far as to meet the corners here at a 45 degree angle and the idea with that is I can make corner brackets so I can make like a corner shelf and shove it in there. But as you see as this is going to go up, um, if let's say that I had a, a bar down here and I didn't like it right here and I wanted to move it up, all that I'd have to do is take the bar off of the hooks that I would make for this, move the hooks to a different size, size sorry, move the hooks to a different height 
drop it in the next set, put the bar back on, and I can basically move everything around as I need to. I'm using three quarter inch lumber for this because three quarter inch is about as you can thick without getting like one by material, which is only three quarter anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this wall and give you guys a further demonstration. So after I finished up the second wall, it was time to start making barbell holders. Now here, I was still kind of experimenting. I wasn't sure if I wanted to create one large backer board for all the pieces. So I was just going with small strips. Now just as a note, something that I've learned is that I would rather have the full length of the cups where it's gonna hold the barbell. So don't, well, they're a little bit less like J cups and uh, a little bit more purpose built. One of the cool things that I plan on doing when I correct all of these J-cup style French cleat mounts is I'm going to try to make some sort of graphic that tells you what kind of bar goes there. Uh, something that's just kind of cool and unique. But I was going super over and uh, basically drilled pilot holes for everything because I wasn't sure how these smaller pieces of wood would split. As it turns out, I, I didn't really need them and I didn't use them uh, the entire time but two screws per unit and I went over and I actually mocked up how the miter piece should go onto the back of the barbell mount and this was the very first one I made and it was made at like 10 o'clock at night for my camber bar and as you can see here they're very easy to use they go together nicely and uh, although it does initially shift a little bit uh, it's not because the actual French cleat is moving, it's because the actual mount design that I made, again, should have that stretcher that goes all the way around the back.
So this is going to end up being my shoe shelf and it is the most specialized one that I made. I'm making this out of three quarter inch uh, plywood that I just had laying around. It just happened to be the perfect size. So I marked it for three shoes in case I ever decide that I needed another pair of shoes. I figured I'd throw some other stuff up there in the meantime and went ahead and cut it to size, cut my backer board as a full stretching. So this is the part that goes into the French cleat and uh, just kind of piece this together. There was no plan to making this and you'll see here in a minute basically the initial plan produced kind of a, a weak mount up on the wall just because of how far away the edge of the shelf was. Now even though it's just shoes up there, I didn't really want a shelf that potentially could fail so you'll end up seeing me rebuild the box to be significantly stronger. So that's it for the build. So as a summary, it's basically, it's a ton of work up front because it's a ton of work to rip down boards to five inches, find halfway on that, which magically isn't two and a half inches because you're cutting on a miter. 
Uh, and then basically making all of the strips parallel to the ground, equal spacing. However, it is worth its weight in gold because now all that I need to do, let's say that I in the future decide, you know, my shoulder rack right here, I don't like this. I can just take this mount and remove it completely. And let's say I want to put it here. I can put it there. If I want to put it up, I can put it up. If I'm like, you know what, I changed my mind, I liked it where I was at, I can just take it and move it right back to where I was at. So basically it's infinite flexibility and you can use it for pretty much whatever you want, whatever uh, you can think of as a mount. So what I've done is I've taken the barbell storage unit that I made out of two by fours and I basically just hacked it up into a bunch of small pieces. So now each one of my farmer's handles has its own mount. My shoulder rock has its own, my curl bar, my duffalo bar. Here's what's really cool. This is my camber bar. This is my heaviest barbell on the rack. It weighs 85 pounds and it is not even pulling away. Not even pulling away. So it's a great way to basically make tons of storage. I've got the MB Power Center power pin hanging up on the wall. And I also whipped up, basically just out of scrap material, my new shoe rack. We'll take a closer look. So now that you can just see my head, what's cool about the, the shoe rack is that it utilizes this wall's French cleat as well as this wall's. So it's extra stable. Um, I did add some two by four mounts in here, basically to give it something to push up against. Again, with the French cleat wall, basically this cleat is pulling down, but if it has nothing to push into the wall with, uh, it's kind of a iffy mount. I made this 100% out of just scrap material that I had hanging around the house. Literally cost me nothing. Now, I do have a few more mounts that I need to make, but I'm not gonna get them done particular for this video. The first one is my transformer bar. I need to get this thing up on the wall. This is actually another point that I wanted to talk on for just a moment. Normally, with like a gun rack style mount, if you have a specialty bar, you, you tend to lose slots in your mount uh, up and down for these handles that get in the way or with the camber bar for where it drops down. But with this, although I do lose the space below it, I can just move stuff around so that it's actually not a waste of the hooks themselves. But focusing back to what we were talking about, the reason that I need to make a special mount for this is because I had made the barbell mount out of two by fours and for a normal barbell that works perfectly to space it off the wall. However, the circle portions here of the transformer bar are just a little bit too wide and they actually bump up against the wall. All that I need to do to actually get that up on the wall is to just use a wider material. So I'm gonna scout around, see if I can find some like two by eight or I might just do some plywood and just make a 100% custom one. Last thing I wanted to touch on before we end this video is just the price. Now, right now, lumber is definitely not cheap. If you were to go and buy three quarter inch hardwood, like A grade lumber, which for French cleats, I normally would, those sheets of plywood used to cost like 50 to $60 a piece at Lowe's or Home Depot. I went the other day and it was just, it was past $80 per sheet. So what I ended up doing is going with some B grade and this is just like white wood uh, lumber. Even with the B grade lumber, this is really solid. It's doing really well. And I paid $50 a sheet, which means that for this entire wall storage, that isn't, it's barely utilized, like 30% utilized maybe and almost all my stuff's on the wall, $100. If you were to go buy like a wall control unit, you get a much smaller space that has a much lower weight capacity and it costs $100. So this, in my opinion, is better than one of those as long as you have the basic like how-to skills. You could even, if I wanted to, which I might do, we'll see, maybe wall control can help hook this up, but I could take a wall control panel and I can mount it 
on this wall and then I can move it around when I decide that I don't like where it's at. But that's been it for this DIY video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry for the massive amounts of voiceover and probably background music that I tend to throw in as filler because I don't like talking that much. I appreciate each and every single one of you that tune in every single week and remember that when it comes to your garage gym, you should always make it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you next week.